Hi everyone, my name is Khan and I'm a second year optometry student and today I wanted to do a video breaking down the four stations of the competency exam. Um, if you don't know what the competency exam is, it is an exam that we do at our school that is an entrance exam into seeing patients and uh, we kind of do things differently as where we don't get our white coat the first day but we go through the first year of optometry school and uh, first semester of the second year and then we take this competency exam which is a skills exam and if we pass our classes and we pass the exam we move on we get our white coat and then we start seeing patients so i'm going to be making four videos um, encompassing the four stations of competency exam i'm going to be um, giving you my experience and uh for station two three and four i did film how i did it without further ado we're going to get started and we're going to start with station one which is right now so for all the videos, I just wanted to put a disclaimer out there. Um, I did really well on my competency exam. Um, I got perfect scores or just high A's in general, but maybe some of the things I'm doing is different than what other optometry students does and what your optometrist does. Um, so this works for my school and it works for me and it may not work for everyone. Um, everyone has a different way they do things. That doesn't mean anyone's right or wrong. And also before you even get started, um, they do change the rubrics up every year and my school's rubric may be different from your school's rubric so you might want to look at that go through every single thing don't take my word for every single little detail um, because a lot of people may do things differently or a lot of attendings may grade things differently so i just want to put that out there first but yeah all right competency day so you get up you go to your competency um you are scheduled at different times so i think mine was around 2 30 so i was one of the last people to go so we get there um we meet in a room that's separate than the actual competency area like where family practices and everything and so you get a packet of um your grading sheets uh, all four of your rubrics or five of your rubrics sorry there's five stations but the fifth one is more just reading the glasses it's not very um patient interaction or anything like that so you go to this room and they have you sign um, your packets and they have you write your names and everything and they give you a little brief uh, a breakdown of the competency and how your day is gonna go and then after that with on your packet there's gonna be a room number that you are assigned to so you're gonna go to that room and you have 15 minutes to do whatever you want um, so what I did was I laid out my um, equipment the way I uh, kind of do my flow um, and also if you don't have a flow that's fine on the rubric sheet that you record your answers in it has all the things that you need to do and so if you forget something it's kind of fine because it's on there and so if you get that ahead of time you can always um, kind of picture how you want to put your occluder where you want to put your color vision books and stuff like that so I laid it out everything perfectly to the grade sheet and so I did that, I cleaned everything, um, washed my hands, and uh, and then my patient came the first year that was sitting for me. So he came, he sat down, and we were ready. And when the time started, the attending came in, and even though I washed my hands already, I made sure to say, hey, like I wiped down the glitter, I wiped down everything, and I washed my hands according to CDC guideline and we are prepared to start the station. So first I introduce myself to the patient, like, hi, Mr. Lee, um, my name is candidate one, two, three, four, five, and uh, what brings you in today? And so my my chief complaint was blurry vision. So I'm just gonna read out what I said and just pretend there's like a no, you know, whatever. So I would say, I said, uh, what brings you in today? How old are your glasses? Okay, and how long has this been going on for? Can you describe your blurry vision? Is it worse at near? Is it worse at far? Or is it both? Okay, and is it in the left eye, the right eye, or is it both eyes? And I know you're experiencing blurry vision, but are you um, experiencing any other problems associated with that? As in headaches, eye fatigue, straining, etc. Okay, and have you tried to do anything to make it feel better? Um, like squinting and anything of that sort? Okay, and that is it for chief complaint and history of present illness. And then I would move on to when was the last time you had an eye exam? And did they find anything pertinent during that visit? 
And when was the last time you had a physical exam? And did they find anything pertinent during that visit? Any past ocular history, any serious infections, any trauma? Um, has anyone told you that you had glaucoma or cataracts? Um, any retinal diseases or any retinal problems? Okay, and what about past medical history? Has anyone ever told you that you had any um, diabetes, any cholesterol problems, or any heart problems at all? Okay, and what about your family? Has anyone ever told you that they had any past ocular history, such as glaucoma, anyone, any blindness in the family, um, any eye problems whatsoever? And what about their past medical history? Does anyone in your family have any diabetes, any heart diseases, hypertension? And most of the time they'll say no, but if someone did say yes, you would follow up with, um, are they treated? Um, are they using any medications? How are they controlling it, etc. Okay, and the next thing you do is ask for their medications. Are you allergic to anything? And now we move on to social history. Um, then I would ask um, if they have any hobbies and if any of them require any visual aids. About your job, like do you do anything that requires visual aids? The last thing is do you smoke or use any alcohol? And if they say yes, ask them how frequent. And that is it for the first part. Um, you kind of can adjust this to how it fits you. For me, um, my order makes sense to me, but a lot of people don't do it in that order. I personally think it's easy for me to do it my way because I um, ask them for their chief complaint and then I ask them about themselves. Like when was the last time they had their eye exam? When was the last time they had their physical exam? I group them together. And then I ask about the patient's um, author history their medical history, I group that together, and then they, I ask about their parents, um, their family, and I ask about their family's awkward history and their family's medical history after their history. I don't know, that just flows with me, but I mean, you do it your way. Um, just make sure to go back to the lab manual and make sure that everything um, is good with everything you're doing, and if your school requires more or less, then uh, just go along with that. Okay, so the next thing is gonna be visual acuity. So I'm gonna, I actually have my rubric out so I can go through it with you. So the next thing is gonna be visual acuity. You're gonna get a chart that's 20 to 50 block and you are going to have the patient include their left eye, right eye, and then both eyes open and read the lowest line they can see. Um, and uh, I think the most important thing about this part is to make sure that you you don't have to memorize the chart, um, but I mean, have like a general idea of what the letters are because you're supposed to be looking at your patient while they're reading, not at the chart as they're reading. So make sure they're not squinting, make sure um, they're not doing anything crazy. So just remember that as they're reading, just go ahead and turn and look at them. And that is two points. Okay, and the next one is we're gonna do uh, near visual acuity, you just don't forget to turn the lamp on. Just remember that it's hard for them to see up close and you want to help them by giving them more light. I don't know, just don't forget the lights. Um, and then the same thing, you're gonna stare at them as they are and make sure that it is 40 centimeters from where they are, have them occlude left eye, right eye. And then you're gonna do the distance cover test. Um, for my rubric and for my school, we didn't have to neutralize. So what we did was we just um, put the chart up that's one to two lines above their best visual acuity. You are going to select a letter that is, you know, like an A or a T or anything that has like sharp edges and give them directions like, hi, Mr. Lee, now I'm going to be testing to see how well your eyes are aligned. So I'm just gonna have you stare right at that letter A and keep the letter clear. And I'm just gonna be moving the secluder back and forth from your eye. And then you do that, you do the distant visual, uh, the distant cover test, and we didn't have to neutralize, so we just had to say, oh, I saw the eyes move in, and that's an XO. And then you write down XO. And then you do it for near, which, um, again, if you turn your lamp off, turn it back on, but I left it on. Um, so you just have them hold it up, same thing, um, have them hold up a chart, um, a little stick chart or whatever, and then um, have them fixate one or two lines of of their best visual acuity and um, 
go ahead and do the same thing but this time in our rubric we have to neutralize so then we I brought up my prism bar and just neutralize and make sure to verbally say I saw the eyes move in and then after it's neutralized with the prism say I see it neutralized and I see it still and now I'm going to give them an extra prism to make sure that the eyes are going in the reversal direction and so you do that and then you say I saw the eyes reverse therefore I'm gonna go back and that is my final answer so whatever that is all right so then you're gonna move on to amplitude of accommodation like, all right, Mr. Lee, now I'm going to see how well your eyes can accommodate. Just remember that they need to be wearing their correction, the lights need to be on. You're gonna use the same letter stick that you use for the cover test and just use one letter above their best visual acuity with, I don't know, a sharp letter or something like that. And then um, include one eye and bring it closer and tell them to let you know when the object is blurry and they can't blink it out anymore. Okay, so then the next one, is um, near point of convergence. This is the one where I personally use the parrot stick. If it's not on your chart, uh, you can just use any picture. And specifically, I would tell the patient to look at the bird's beak because it's more um, defined than just like the parrot in general. And so you're gonna have their correction on, lamp still on, and you're gonna tell them like, I'm going to now see how well your eyes can converge and then just bring it closely and tell them to let you know when it comes blurry, break into two and then pull it back out and when it comes back as one. If it goes all the way to the nose, you just write to the nose. If you notice that any of their eyes turned out, record that as well. And I would say, don't forget to go back to the clinic manual just to make sure that you know how to record everything correctly. All right, so the next one is gonna be stereo acuity. Um, I would say I'm going to be testing how well your depth perception is. And you do a near stereo acuity test, um, keep their glasses on, put the polarizing uh, glasses on them. So if they're wearing glasses, they'll just have two glasses on and then you sit and then you have them read. So the next one's gonna be confrontation, visual field and extended vision. I would just say I'm just now going to be testing your peripheral vision and if, if you ever become uncomfortable during this test just let me know um, but we're just going to see how well you can see in your periphery and so you just do confrontation visual feel you know and then uh, extend our vision just hold a pen whatever you're holding honestly um, just let them know when they first see the pen and that's it don't forget to explain the procedure to them then the next one is versions. Just tell them I'm now going to be testing to see how well your eye muscles work. So you now you can grab a light or whatever you want. You just move into an H and have them follow. And also tell them if they ever become uncomfortable or it starts hurting during the procedure, just let you know. Okay, so next one's gonna be pupillary reflexes. And you're just gonna tell them that I'm now going to be testing to see your pupil response. So, you know, just Turn off all the lights, you know, you're going to do direct, direct, and then uh, consensual, consensual, and then do the swinging flashlight test. And yeah, that concludes station one. This is a lot of me talking through it. Um, so I'm hoping the other videos are better because I'm actually showing you how to do it. All right, bye guys. I'll see you for station two, three, and four.